If you have your Bibles today, turn to uh, uh, Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 6. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 6. One of the things I really thought when I was going to, the Lord asked me to uh, be out there under the cross uh, from daylight to dark, was uh, I thought that uh, I would have all this time to read the Bible. And I have got to read it some, but I really didn't get as much time to study as I thought I was going to. So today, you're just going to kind of get the overflow of what God put on my heart Tuesday. I've just kind of let it marinate there and been thinking about it. But I've been thinking about this word called a testimony. And I'm not going to ask you to stand in reading of, uh, in honor of reading God's word, because I'm going to uh, go through the entire chapter six and part of chapter seven, and y'all don't want to stand that long. Amen. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll ask God to add his blessings upon the reading and the preaching of his word. Father, it's been a good week. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for the opportunity to just to, to spend a week uh, praying over our city. And Lord, to uh, pray for those that, that you have brought our way. And Lord, there have been many burdens and many hurts and many needs. Uh, Lord, uh, 48 prayer requests been nailed to the cross. Father, some homeless, some just, uh, they come up in tears. And Lord, I wonder how many people have driven by and saw us the, here and saw the signs that said pray and Lord heard you whisper to them, Lord, we want more of you and less of us. Lord, the great need of the day is Jesus for you to be alive in the life of our city. Father, I think about uh, needing and wanting a, a testimony. So Father, do that amongst us. Father, give me strength to preach. Holy Spirit, just uh, undergird your word this morning. May your will be done. For those that are watching online today, Lord, I pray blessings upon them as well, all the burdens in their life, all the things that they're going through. So Lord, just draw us close. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Acts chapter number six, let's begin in verse number one, in those days when the numbers of the disciples were multiplying. I like that word. I like the word multiplying. God was doing such a work. He wasn't just adding to the church. He was multiplying. I like that because, you see, I, I was talking to somebody this week, and, and we were talking about leading people to the Lord. And, and I, I want to lead people to the Lord. I want, I want spiritual children, amen? Amen. But I want spiritual grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren and to the 10th generation because, you see, the ones that I get the privilege of leading to the Lord, I want them leading people to the Lord. And I want those to be leading people to the Lord. So I like this. It says, in that day when the numbers of the disciples, people who were followers of Christ, when those disciples were multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Really what was happening here was there was a group of uh, Hebrew Jews, but there was also a group of the Hellenistic or the Greek Jews that they had come over. And, and there's always a, a time, listen to me now, when one group will find fault with another group. Remember what I've told you so many times, that Satan always is trying to divide and conquer. He's trying to pit this group against that group. And in this particular uh, occasion, there was one group that thought that they were getting more of the daily distribution than the other group. And they said, hey, they're, they're picking sides. That group's getting more than our group. Don't buy into that. Don't let Satan pit one group against another. Don't buy into it. That's what he likes to do. He likes to divide and conquer. Don't let him win. He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's his tools. But just because he wants to come like that does not mean that we should buy into it in any way at all. So he said there was a, a, a group of people fighting against a, another group. But it says in verse 2, then the twelve, that is the uh, apostles, they summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable 
that we should leave the Word of God. It's not good that, that God has called us to this. He's gifted to this. He, he wants us to do this, but he said it's not desirable that we should leave the Word of God and serve tables. Not saying that that's not needful or important, but he said we've got a calling on our life. So he says, therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation. We need to let the Lord lead us to people, and we need to set them apart. And he said the first prerequisite is that they have a good reputation. Listen to me now. A testimony among the people. Who is it that when you think of them, that they have a good testimony that God is at work in their life? And can I say, basically, that's what I desire today. When people see me, I hope that they don't just see Brian. I hope that they don't just see the work of my hands. But really what I want is I want them to see Christ in me, the hope of glory. Not Brian's a good guy, but my goodness, hadn't Jesus been good to Brian? My goodness, how if, if God can work through Brian, God, God can work through anybody. Amen? He, said that, he says, find seven men of good reputation. And now look at the second part of this. Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Now, to be full of something, that means that there's no dissonance in there. That means that, that there's not any uh, uh, co-mixture of anything else. So when he looked at their life, what they were full of was the work of God in their life, full of the Holy Spirit within them. Now, picture a glass here this morning. And, and if, if it's full of one thing, that's what you get. If it's full of something else, that's what you get. But if there's a mixture, a commingling, and in our lives, I'm afraid that there may be a little bit of us, and there may be a little bit of something else, and there may be a little bit of God. I'm going to just pause and talk about this for just a moment. In our lives, Let's, today's Sunday. Today's church day. It's the day that we come to God's house to meet with God's people and we worship Him and I pray in spirit and in truth. We praise Him. We sing of Him. We hear the Word of God. We'll get up on Sunday morning and we'll put on our church clothes. And then we'll go to God's house and we'll meet with God's people and we'll sing and we'll, we'll be a part of the preaching. We may even say an amen or two. And we'll, then we'll leave the, the church house, and we may get a bite to eat, and we'll go home. Listen to me now. We'll take off our church clothes, and we'll put them back in the closet, and we'll put on our other clothes, and then we'll live the rest of our week. We may look at the Bible. We may spend five minutes in the Bible. We may... Say a prayer over our food, our food. We may even read a short devotion. We may think about the Lord every now and again. But really what happens is that there becomes Jesus, and what He wants in our life. But then there becomes us, what I want in my life. Matter of fact, if we're not careful, we'll go to church on Sunday and we'll act a certain way and we'll give Jesus our Sundays, but then we'll go and we'll, we'll take all that and we'll lay it down and then we'll do what we want for the rest of the week. It's what we want to do. It's what we think, our hobbies, our desires, our life, so to speak, our work life, our play life, our family life. And if we're not careful, there will be two separate lives. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. At work, there needs to be one life. When we go to the restaurants, it needs to be one life. When we're working in the yard, it needs to be one life. When we're with our friends, it needs to be the same life. If you're acting one way at church 
and a different way during the week, that is what the, the world calls hypocrisy. And, and, and I've heard people say, I don't want to go to church. That's where the hypocrites are. I want to say, well, come on and join us. You're one too. But really what they're saying is those, those people act one way and then they act another way. Their cup is filled with one thing, but then they've let something else come in and mix in with it. Can I just uh, tell you that one day we're going to, Brian's going to breathe his last breath. My heart's going to quit. My soul's going to be with Jesus. The Bible says, absent the body, present with the Lord. Amen, hallelujah, I'm going home. That is my home. I'm just a pilgrim. I'm just traveling through this world. But when I get home, that's God's home. That's Jesus' home. And everything that is of the nature of God is in heaven. When we get to heaven, it will be all love. It will be all joy, all peace. Everybody will be good. Everybody will just do the things of God. And, and there will be none of this, hey, I, I, I guess I need to go to the throne this morning and Praise God and sing a few praises to God. And then I'll take off the white robes of glory and I'll lay them down and, and I'll get my fishing pole and I'll go fishing. Uh-uh, not in heaven. Listen, every moment of all of eternity, we will walk under the cloud of his glory. We will be in his presence of his goodness. There will be none of this one day, my way, one day, his day, every moment of eternity will all be about him. And all God's people said, shouldn't we practice that now? If my life is about Jesus one moment, but then I'm going to lay that down and I'm going to do what I want, what I think, what I want to do, God help us, God help us, God help us. When Jesus called his followers, what he was calling them, he was calling them to be disciples of Christ, followers of Christ. And that's what we're supposed to be. So here in this passage, he says there was a dispute that came up. So he says what we need, it's not desirable that we leave the, the word of God and serve tables. He said, find out men of good reputation and listen to this next phrase, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business, this, this calling or this duty, this service. We need to let them take care of that so we can part, be a part of what he says in verse 4. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Literally, the, the phrase there, if you study the Greek, there's a participle there. Give himself continually to the prayer and to the ministry of the Word. That's really what I'm going to try to do in the month of August. From daylight to dark, I'm going to be out there under the cross giving myself to the prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Matter of fact, I hope I can do that even more. So this saying, verse 5, said, uh, please the whole multitude, and they chose seven but I really want to talk about the first one. His name is Stephen. It means the, uh, mean the crown. That's what his name means. But look what it says in verse 5. A man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Full of faith. Now what is faith? That means his life was believing in God, trusting in God. And because he believed in God and trusted in God... <clears throat> he lived it out. So no matter what the circumstance was, he was trusting in God in that circumstance. I'm going to say it again. Come on, I don't know if you heard me. He was living his life in such a way, he was full of the Holy Spirit, but he was also full of faith. That meant no matter what he was facing, he was believing, he was trusting, he was acting upon it. And that's what faith is. Acting upon the Word of God. Acting because you believe in God. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says it is impossible to, to uh, please God 
except by faith. So really what he's saying is, is in our lives, y'all listen to me, we need to be living in such a way that we're living by pleasing God by faith. No matter this, just trusting God to take care of us, trusting God to provide for us, trusting God to do a work. So that's what Stephen's life was. Verse 7 says, when they had done this, the word of God spread. Verse number 8, Stephen, full of faith, y'all like that? Completely full of faith, completely believing God, trusting in him, and power. I like that. Because if God calls you to something and allows you to go through a circumstance, you may see yourself in deficit, but he says, hold on. If you're filled with God and trusting in him, not only will he give you faith, but he'll give you power to do what he's called you to do. Full of faith and power did great wonders and signs among the people. Have you ever wondered why he didn't write down all the things that they were doing? I believe it's because if he wrote down, well, they were doing this wonder and this sign, people today be trying to copy it. But I just know that no matter what I go through, God's going to be with me. Y'all all all right with that? I'm all right with it because if he's with me, I'm okay. Well, verse 9, then there arose some from uh, those called the synagogue of the freedmen. Now, this is a subgroup of the Jews that they had kind of set themselves apart. And in verse 9, it said, and they were disputing with Stephen. Doesn't that sound like a fuss or a fight coming up? Isn't there always some kind of contention happening among people? Verse 10, and they, they're, they're fussing with Stephen. They're trying to argue with Stephen. But it says in verse 10, they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Now, whose spirit? Jesus' spirit. And the wisdom was the work of the Holy Spirit in his life. So then, in verse 11, they, were seek, they, they went and they secretly induced men to say, we've heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they, well, you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to get up a group of people to lie about what was going on in Stephen's life. Does this not sound exactly like what, he, what they did against Jesus? They got up a group trying to get them to lie saying Jesus did this or did that when Jesus never did anything wrong. So here they're trying to get him to to lie, and they're saying uh, he's done some some blasphemous things against Moses and God. I I think Moses would have said, y'all leave me out of this, right? I don't think Moses would have wanted to be put on that pedestal. Verse 12, they stirred up the people, the elders, the scribes, and they came upon him, and they seized him, and they brought him to the council. Then they set up false witnesses who said, This man does not cease to blaspheme words against this holy place and against the law. He's saying, he's saying words against the, the temple. The temple was simply where the place where people to come in to worship God and against the law. But the law was simply there to point people to Christ. You know, I I wrote this down. I don't want to miss this phrase. Something which was meant to be a good thing, the temple and the the law, became a bad thing because they made it the main thing instead of letting Jesus be the main thing. Look what it says here. This man does not cease to blaspheme words against his holy place and law, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered us. They care more about their customs. They care more about the way in which they did church than they did the God of the church. And all who sat in the council looked steadfastly at him. Look at now. They're looking at at Stephen. When they looked at him, they looked steadfastly at him. They saw his face as the face of an angel. What a testimony. And in chapter 7, you see one of the most glorious testimonies of 
Stephen just preached a sermon, a preaching deacon, by the way. I like that. He, he began all the way back with Abraham and took them all the way through, back down to when uh, David was king of, of Israel and, and Solomon built the temple and all the things that were happening there. But then he gets to verse 51 in chapter 7. Y'all watch it. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ear. You know, stiff-necked means I will not be moved. This is what I think. This is what I believe. And, and I'm just not going to change. Uncir you know, the Jews always talked about being this circumcised, but he called them uncircumcised of heart and ear. I believe he's got, got their attention now. Matter of fact, he's about to make them mad, real mad. He says, as your fathers did, so do you. He talked about those Jews in the generations before. He says, which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers. You have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. Now they're mad at him. Verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed at him with their teeth. And, but, but he, that is Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazes into heaven and he saw the, the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city. Look at this now. And they stoned him. They took up rocks and threw it at him. And hit his body. Hit him in the head and he's bleeding. Hit him in the arms. Hit him in the side. Bones are breaking. His body is basically being broken in front of them. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of Steve, a man, young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knew where he was going. He was going to heaven. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. Does that not sound like Jesus on the cross? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When he had said this, he fell asleep. I, I, I thought about that. What a wonderful testimony of walking with Christ. When they came against him, he just loved him. They're throwing rocks at him. They're killing him, literally killing him. And he's saying, Lord, don't hold this charge against them. What a testimony of what it meant to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He didn't live a long life, but he lived a blessed life. He lived out his life of truth in front of them. I guess a lot of people want to live a long life down here on earth. Stephen didn't get that opportunity. But what a testimony. When people saw Stephen, they saw Jesus in Stephen. When people saw the way he acted, it reminded them of a loving, holy God. Once again, I think about how we live our life. We'll compartmentalize it and we'll say, Lord, you can have this part, but all this other part's mine. Leave me alone. I'll do what I want, when I want, how I want. And if you say something that they don't like, man, they're going to come after you. They're going to come after you. Let them come. Let them throw whatever they want after us. I pray that in my day that people will see Christ in me, the hope of glory. What is your testimony? How is it you're living your life? I've done a lot of funerals, and I, Mark has too, and I guess that, that uh, when I've, you ever heard anybody say at a funeral, there was a date there when they were born and a date there when they died, but the dash in between, that's how they live their life. 
Can I say to you today, that's the testimony. And everybody's got one. You mention my name, people will tell you what they think about me. Old Brian, he was this or he was that. But I pray that when they think of my life and when they think of your life, they won't just say, oh, Brian was ugly or Brian was handsome or Brian was a hard worker or he was a lazy old soul. I pray that when they think of me and I pray that when they think of you, they'll think of what God did in your life, how God blessed you, how God took care of you. Now, I've been called everything under the book. I've had people say this about me and I've had people say that about me. But you know what? The only one that matters is what Jesus thinks. And when Stephen was going through this, the Bible says that Jesus stood up. Now the Bible tells us that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. But when Stephen was going through this, and really they were attacking Jesus as they attacked Stephen, our Lord stood up. He had his attention. He'll be there for you. He'll help you every step of the way. Let me just say this one last thing. What testimony are you giving this world?